Today, I'm speaking again with Fabrication Shop Supervisor Bobby Payne and Accent Signage's Marketing Manager Christy Cutter for part two of our two-part series about tactile and braille signage today. In part two, we will conclude our technical discussion about the pros and cons of today's popular fabrication processes for tactile signs, as well as touch on some popular products for tactile sign making. Thank you for joining us again. Christy, in part one, you provided technical explanations of the raster braille versus photopolymer methods for manufacturing tactile signage. Can you shed some light on the benefits of using one method versus the other? Raster braille can be inserted into multiple materials, such as acrylic, wood, brass, aluminum, stainless steel, copper, zinc, corian, dye bond, and more. The one restriction, however, is glass. On the other hand, if you decide to use photopolymer, you can only create signage with photopolymer sheets of material. Once photopolymer is processed, many finishing options are available. Typically, the signs are painted and then tipped. However, the painted surface of photopolymer isn't as durable as the surface of the raster braille signage and roll mark sheets of material. And the use of photopolymer also makes it difficult to produce rounded braille dots. This makes it difficult to remain compliant. Are there any special tips that fabricators should be aware of when working with raster braille versus photopolymer? It's very important for braille dots on tactile signage to be perfectly round to help braille users retain sensitivity in their fingertips. When braille dots are not perfectly round, fingertips can become calloused and less sensitive, causing reading difficulties. All raster spheres used in applied and inlaid methods are the same size and shape, but within the photopolymer process, it's difficult to control the height and roundness of the raised dots produced by the chemical reaction, and they can often vary slightly from one sign to the next. What about time and cost? Is one method less time consuming or less costly? Because the raster method of braille offers the flexibility to make complex signage to very basic signage, fabrication time varies. Raster braille also generally costs less as the price of engraving materials is less than that of photopolymer sheets. Not to mention, it's also much easier to produce one-of-a-kind custom signs with the raster method of braille, as engraving materials offer the flexibility to cut substrates in any size and shape. The photopolymer process is designed for more mass production rather than creativity. Bobby, what Romark engraving materials are available to make tactile signage? Romark has been manufacturing materials for tactile sign making for more than 20 years and offers the industry's widest variety of options to create any desired look. In terms of ADA compliant sheet materials, we offer our exclusive ADA alternative substrates and appliques, as well as other ADA compliant materials, including ultramat, frosted acrylics, color hues, and laser glow. We offer an excellent range of eggshell matte finished products from our color hues and ADA alternative lines in popular interior design colors to our laser glow line of plastic sheet material that glows in the dark. Wow, Romark does provide a lot of engraving sheet options for fabricating tactile signs. Since the industry now allows more creativity, what about color options? You're right, Hillary. You'd be surprised how many different substrate and accent colors you can use on a tactile sign and still remain compliant. Romark closely monitors color trends to meet the changing needs of our customers. Our affiliation with the Color Marketing Group and the interior design industry give us inspiration and access to color combinations that meet current specifications and demand to give customers the competitive edge in the market. Romark's ADA alternative and Color Hues product lines in particular are very popular for tactile and ADA compliant sign making applications. Romark is consistently adding new colors to both of these product lines. To conclude this interview, are there any very common questions that your customers frequently ask about producing or designing tactile signage? Maybe this could dispel some of the questions our listeners are having. By far, the most common concern we hear is, will I have enough contrast if I use this color over this color? Fact is, the 70-30 color ratio is merely a recommendation within the regulation, and as long as you're using a dark over light or vice versa, the contrast ratio really need not be a concern. To facilitate color selection, Romark offers a color contrast recommendation chart on our website. We want to empower fabricators by helping them realize how easy the fabrication and design process can be with little direction and innovation. Tactile signage is already a natural extension for many sign and engraving shops and can be made with most of the equipment that fabricators already use on a daily basis. Customers often ask if the font they are using is compliant. The main rule for ADA fonts is that they must be sans serif. Serifs are a small line attached to the end of a stroke in a letter or symbol. Some of the most commonly used fonts are Arial, Helvetica, Frutiger, and Century. All tactile copy must be in uppercase, and all letters have height restrictions. 
The height maximum is 2 inches, and the height minimum is 5 eighths inches. Thank you to Romark and Accent Signage Systems for providing helpful insight into the tactile sign industry and fabrication processes. To view Romark's products for tactile sign making, visit www.romark.com to check out a wide variety of interior signage and raster braille products. And to learn more about Accent's fabrication and sign making services, be sure to visit www.accentsignage.com.